All right, now we're going to talk about uh, factoring quadratic expressions. What that means is it has an x squared term and then an x term and then like an integer term or number term or whatever. Now, when I factor quadratics, it's pretty easy as long as you follow a few somewhat convoluted ways to get there. So uh, let me show you what a quadratic looks like first off. It looks like this. Uh, this is kind of a more, uh, I'm going to do some of the basic stuff in here, but this is more advanced uh, level in terms of uh, it has a number in front of the x squared. Generally, you start out with there's no number in front of x squared. Maybe I'll make another video about that one day. Who knows? Anyway, the first thing that I need to do when I'm factoring quadratics or quadratic expression is pull out any common factors. So if a number goes into all three of the terms, obviously if it's a quadratic it doesn't have an x that it can share, or maybe it does and it becomes a quadratic. So pull out any common factors that you have. So I'm going to look at my uh, paper here. I know that 3 goes into 9 and 15 also has 3 as a factor, but 4, no. So this one's pretty good. It's as far down as it can go. I don't have to pull out any common factors. We'll probably see a couple in just a few minutes. Uh, so factoring, uh, pull out any common factors is good for this one. The next one is to slide. Uh, we're going to do something called slide and divide. That's what most people call it. It really should be slide, factor, divide, but you know, factor doesn't rhyme, so I guess they kicked that part of it out. Now, um, when I do that, what I mean when I say slide is I'm going to take the first number in the set and I'm just going to circle it. And then I'm going to slide it over here. Now, as you can see, I'm also going to, uh, this is a multiply. So here I'm going to also slide over the uh, operation as well. So in the problem up here, I'm going to circle this 9 and I'm going to slide it over to this 4. Everything that I didn't move, I'm just going to bring down. So the x squared stays. That's good. Uh, 9 times 4 is 36. So now, as you can see, I, got, I moved that uh, integer in front of the x squared, so now I can do something with it. In order to get there, I have to factor it. Uh, and there's a little process to do that, and I'll have a little grid I'll show in a second. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is look at the second sign in the quadratic. Here's the second sign the one that's visible, obviously there's one here that you don't see, but I'm talking about visible signs. This is the second sign. This will tell me specifically in my answer whether the signs in the answer are going to be the same or different. So let me just show you this little graphic that I'd made up earlier. If in my, if in my second sign is positive, the answers that I'm going to get, so in this form, so it kind of looks like uh, polynomials that you probably did FOIL with earlier. If I have a plus, my answer signs are going to be the same. So they're either going to be plus or they're going to be minus. If the second sign is minus, then they're going to be different. That's the worst looking different ever, but it is different, I assure you. It's a different kind of different. Now, in my question here, my second sign is plus, which means, as you can see, the answer solution is going to be the same. The second step that I'm going to look at for factoring is looking at that first sign. The first sign is going to tell me what the actual, uh, op what the actual signs are. Are they both plus, minus, minus? So we saw in ours that that second sign was a plus. So I'm going to look at it and look at the first sign. The first sign in my uh, little situation here is plus. So the second sign is plus, the first sign is plus. So that means my factored answer is going to be x plus whatever the number is, and then x plus whatever else it is. I'm trying to help you set it up before you have to go through and mess with factoring out that second number. That's later on. I'd rather you set it up correctly, and it makes your life 50 times easier if you don't have to like fiddle with things for two hours. Um, for instance, uh, let's look at this one. This is a perfect example. In fact, da -da -da, it's the same exact question that we have there. My second sign is plus. Uh, my first sign is also plus, so my answer is going to be something in the realm of x plus something. I'm going to put something here eventually. I'm going to do that by factoring this number, you'll see. And x plus something else. Now, let's look at the first one that I'd written down down here. In this one, the second sign is plus. See? So that means the answers are the same. Then I have to go to that first sign and it is minus. So that means, because this is plus and this is minus, both my signs are going to be minus. So 
x minus something or other, x minus something or other again. And for this one, if the second sign, the one I look at uh, initially, is negative or a minus, I know that the signs are going to be different. And the order of them doesn't make any difference. So no matter what the first sign is, it's either going to be plus minus or minus plus. And guess what? It does not matter which one you write down before you factor things out. It matters what numbers you put after them, but it's irrelevant to what you write down. So I'm just going to do plus and minus. That's how I know what, uh, what it should look like when I set it up. If you have it set up correctly, the rest of it is simple. The next step that I need to do after I've got it set up, so by the way, since I did a factor for this, I'm going to go ahead and write down x plus something or other and x plus something or other else. The next step is to do a factor tree. Factor trees are pretty simple. I'm just going to do a factor list for 36. Here's my factor tree for 36. I've got 1 and 36, 2 and 18. By the way, if you're really bad at this, some people are just bad at it naturally. If you have a calculator, just do divide by 1. It always works. Then do 36 divided by 2. So the answer is 2, and then or you get 2, and you get an integer answer, no decimal. You get 18. So write down 2 and 18. You'll do 3. You'll get 12. You'll do 4 and get 9. You'll do 5 and get some weird decimal, so that's not a factor. But 6 is. You get 6 and 6. Now the next one to go down would be 7, but once they cross over, you're done. Those are all the factor lists. Now, the last thing that we have to do is place the factors. And the nice thing about placing the factors is that if the signs are the same, I'm going to be looking at adding factors to find that middle number. If the signs are different, I'm dedicated to making different and look nicer. I'm going to subtract. And I paid for it by a crappy looking subtract. It is what it is. Now, what I mean by add and subtract is I'm going to look at the factors in these factor lists, and I'm only going to look at them in terms of rows. Now, these signs are the same, right? So that means that I'm going to find a group of these that add up to give me 15. Well, 1 plus 36 is 37, so that's not it. 18 plus 2, no. Now, 3 plus 12, that's perfect. That gives me 15, so I know my answer for that part is 3 and 12. And if you wanted to check your work, you could go back and do x times x is x squared x times 12 is 12x, 3 times x is 3x, so 12 plus 3x gives me 15x, and then 3 times 12 gives me 36. So that works it back out as, almost as far as I needed to go. This is a pretty long problem, right? So from there, my last thing, remember that I did the slide thing? Now I've got to do the divide thing. What the divide thing means is that I go back and divide each of these numbers by the original number. And if it gives me a nice fraction, I've got to do something else with it, but we'll look at that in just a second. So I circled the 9 here, which is very smart of me to do, because then it's easy for me to go back down and try to do this division. Now, I'm going to reduce those fractions down to give me x plus 1 third. Then I'm going to give me, uh, give myself, give me, good lord, that's pathetic uh, English, sorry about that. 4 over 3. That's what it reduces as an improper fraction. Now, we're almost finished, I swear. The thing about this is you can't leave the fraction there. So go ahead and reduce that fraction down, but once you reduce the fraction, if it's not a whole number, if we were dividing by 3 on both of them, then we just have uh, if this had been a 3 originally and we got the same answer, we would get x plus 1 and we'd be good to go. And 12 divided by 3 is 4, so x plus 4 would be awesome. However, we l we're left with these fractions. We can't have that. So what we're going to have to do is bump slide this 3 that didn't work back up here. So it used to be 1 divided by 3. We've got to multiply that by 3 to get it back to the regular number. 
and if we multiply that by 3 we do that as well but it just looks like we just slide it back up here three x plus one three x plus four it's a really simple process to do it um, so let's we'll do a couple examples and then I think it'll be a lot clearer that's just the long way to go about it so a couple examples I think everything will be smooth